You're watching Captains of Industry here on CNBC Africa, and I'm chatting to Brian Malefi, the CEO of Transnet. Brian, thanks so much for joining. Thank you very much. Brian, let's talk about Transnet becoming an OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer, on the back of the recent locomotive success story. Share it with me. Yes, the idea is that eventually we'll be able to manufacture and have intellectual property rights for our own locomotive, the Trans-Africa locomotive. And um, these um, acquisitions are helping us uh, to understand the engineering of locomotives. We already have established a research and development unit within Transnet Engineering uh, that is working on the preliminary uh, drawings and designs of a locomotive. Talk to me about this 95 tranche or the 95 locomotives, electric locomotives. Of them, 10 were brought in from China, 85 manufactured on the ground. Am I correct in saying that? Indeed, yes. 85 of them were assembled at Transnet Engineering uh, in South Africa. Uh, only 10 were uh, totally manufactured in uh, China. So we used local labor, we used um, local contractors to supply certain parts of the locomotive uh, and so on. So this was very exciting for us. The, the knowledge transfer that took place with China South Rail, 190 members of Transnet or staff of Transnet yes. sent over to China. For what period? So tell me a little bit about how that knowledge transfer took place. They spent about three months in uh, China um, during the manufacture of the first 10 so that they can come back into supervisory positions here um, to, to manufacture the, the remaining 85. So uh, they spent time there, learned about the manufacture, but also when we were manufacturing the 85, we had some uh, Chinese employees coming to work at Transnet just to supervise and make sure that the locomotives will be put together fine. We've spoken a lot on news platforms recently about the inability of South Africa to attract foreign direct investment. You, however, sir, seem to be getting it right. International finance institutions and the like are throwing money at your projects. What are you doing right? Well, a couple of years ago, I mean, and Transnet has had a reputation over the years, even before I arrived, it had a good credit standing. And um, um, we announced the market demand strategy and, uh, and we've stuck to it. Uh, and um, we said we would spend 300 billion revitalizing equipment that we would generate revenue to pay for the 300 billion and that we will only borrow 100 billion. And we're still on track with that program. Uh, and um, our financial ratios, our balance sheet has not been compromised. In fact, it has been growing from strength to strength in the last five years. Uh, and so uh, investors are quite happy with that, uh, happy to buy Transnet bonds. A lot of support coming from Canada and the US. Is that post very successful road shows into those territories? You'll remember that uh, when we bought the what, 1,000 locomotives, well, we are still buying them when we announced the tender. Uh, the tender was awarded to the Chinese uh, company, China South Rail, China North Rail. And General Electric and Bombardier. And Bombardier. So in Canada and in the United States, they have the export uh, agencies, export uh, support agencies that uh, are able to give guarantees for exports coming out of Canada or the United States. In, in, in the United States, it's called U.S. Exim and in Canada, it's Canada Exim. So what we did is we applied for the, uh, uh, for the uh, guarantees uh, uh, for the locomotives that we were going to be buying from Bombardier and from the US, and this was granted. Despite the fact that we will manufacture the locomotives in South Africa, they were regarded as exports out of uh, Canada and the uh, United States because we bought from American and Canadian companies. So we were able to get guarantees of about 13 billion, and 13 billion rand, and, uh, and, and we're able to conclude loans on the back of those uh, guarantees. Are you confident of future support from the global bond environment? Of course, of course. We uh, have uh, quite a few sources that are available to us to fund the program, as we have said before, the global medium-term note program, which is uh, uh, international bond issues. In fact, uh, last year we were, um, uh, or in the last financial year, uh, we issued an international bond denominated in RAND 
for about 5 billion rand, which was uh, quite a bold move, and uh, it was taken up by European and American investors. Uh, there is appetite for transnet uh, dollar-denominated bonds. Uh, the domestic market is always deep um, and liquid, and we issue there every fortnight. We have facilities with the African Development Bank, and now the Chinese are also saying they can come to the party to the extent that we're buying in China. How can we take Transnet's success and extrapolate that to other state-owned entities in the country? I think the other state-owned entities uh, are perhaps not doing that badly. They just have different challenges to ours. And some, I mean, right, it's you know you're on television <laughs> and you're going to be quoted <laughs> as saying the other state-owned enterprises are not doing as badly. Are you happy? You don't want to refocus that statement? Or let me rephrase the statement. I don't think the other state entities are doing very badly. Um, Ve I see the, the addition of very badly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll they're give not, you that. They're not doing badly at all um, uh, because um, uh, they just have different challenges to the ones that we have and uh, they are trying their best to handle the, cha the challenges that they have. Have they come and asked you for some advice on those challenges? Well, we have forums. Uh, for example, the state-owned entities that are under the Department of Public Enterprises. We meet, uh, we have a chairpersons and a CEOs forum that meets with the minister periodically. So we share information and advice there. Do you think there is potential to see dramatic turnarounds in the likes of an Eskom, the likes of a South African Airways? Look, I mean, the last time I checked, uh, today, yesterday, and the day before yesterday, this whole month, South African Airways aeroplanes are flying. Uh, it's just there's a focus on particular problems at SAA, and sometimes I think blown out of proportion. The last time I checked, the lights are on in South Africa. We do have uh, uh, periodic uh, problems with uh, um, uh, switching off of the lights and so on, but generally the lights are on. I mean, every day people go home and in the evening they uh, press a switch on the, on the wall and the lights come on. Let's talk about infrastructure and the role that Transnet can play in Africa. Yes. Well, our plans, um, we realize that rail is going to be quite important for um, the development of the African continent and we are positioning ourselves to be able to supply the equipment that is going to be required and that is why we are uh, moving towards becoming an original equipment manufacturer. We are not just looking at locomotives, we are also manufacturing wagons, we are also looking at uh, engineering in port equipment and seeing how we can improve technology in uh, port equipment. So we are positioning ourselves to bring in the latest technologies to being the supplier of choice for developments in rail and ports on the continent. What traction, you've alluded to the amazing traction that you're getting in the international environment. What traction are you having with business leaders and government leaders on the African continent in terms of the role that you can play in changing the infrastructure game? President Zuma announced uh, at the function where we were um, uh, launching the 95 locomotives that the AU has taken a decision to make uh, Transnet Engineering of South Africa the, um, the supplier of choice for uh, rail equipment and rail developments on the continent. So uh, already I think we have made a lot of progress in uh, marketing our capabilities uh, to the extent that the AU has endorsed us uh, and the AU will actively encourage uh, other African countries to look at us uh, when they want to buy locomotives or equipment for rail or when they need expertise. Brian, you've also recently been quoted as expressing concern over falling coal prices. Can I ask you to elaborate on the point you were making? Well, the coal prices have fallen, as you know. Our customers are not just coal prices, commodity prices, uh, iron ore as well, and our customers are um, um, uh, coal manufacturers, coal producers that are exporting coal, and they have not getting the prices that they had been hoping to get uh, in uh, in uh, rent terms uh, um, and so what has happened especially during this uh, year that is about to end the financial year that is about to end in March is that we have not been able to get the increases uh, in the uh, in our services to them because uh, they have complained that you know they're not getting money the prices have not increased in fact prices have been dropping and so we have relented and so while we have uh, 
continued to improve our service and carry record amounts of coal on our rail, uh, record amounts of iron ore and other goods, uh, we have not been, it, it has not been translating into, um, into turnover that it should have translated into. Uh, it's, not but, a, but it's, a, it's a macroeconomic issue that you, you're grappling with. It is with indeed, here. but we have said we will continue with our investment program. Uh, irrespective? Irrespective, because uh, this investment program is not about this cycle. It is uh, the, these these locomotives have uh, 30, 40 year lifespan, uh, and it is about the next 30 or 40 years uh, that we will create capability uh, and uh, uh, for South Africa to carry goods on rail. So, um, so although now we have a, a, a downturn in the cycle, uh, we will continue to invest, especially because when the prices do go up again, we'll be able to have intelligent discussions about price increases. Is that what the economists, the analysts out there are saying, that inevitably commodity prices will tick up again? Yes, yes. Uh, it's just a cycle uh, and we think they will tick up again. And when they do, we will be in a, in a, in a position to have already invested. So it's counter cyclical investment, if you like. How long can you ride through the downturn? Well, we can ride through, I mean, the next two, three years. Uh, I don't think it will last that long, but uh, we are good for the next two, three years to ride through it. Let's talk about the, the broader South African economy with uh, the 1.4% GDP growth or 1.5% GDP growth as Statistics South Africa released recently, just before the budget uh, for 2014. We're targeting now 2% growth for 2015. Is that realistic given the current electricity constraints that the economy, that the country is experiencing? I think it is. Uh, firstly, because I believe that uh, the electricity problems are temporary. They are not, um, they are not systemic. They, are not, uh, they, don't, they don't define who we are. It's just uh, they are temporary problems. <laughs>
that will always be there because of uh, business desire to maximize profits and labor's desire to increase uh, benefits for workers and there is a natural tension. Um, the, the, the tension that is there between labor, business and government I think is healthy and takes us forward because it is in contradictions that you have progress. Um, the tension uh, may be healthy but the mistrust? I think the mistrust is a manifestation of the uh, contradictions that are there. The government has got certain priorities, uh, uh, business has got priorities, labor has priorities, and I think in this, uh, in this interaction of uh, people that have, uh, or, or organizations that have uh, different primary interests, uh, we are bound to get the best product from their disagreements, if you like, or they are. So if everybody was agreeing and there was no tension, uh, there would not be progress. So it is out of these uh, contradictions that exist between government, labor, and business that uh, we actually have the best model in South Africa. There's very few countries in the world that allow those tensions to come out and be visible to everybody. Uh, uh, there are very few countries that have structures like NEDLEC where government, labor and business come together to talk about their differences which are inherent. At the World Economic Forum in Davos in January, I had the opportunity to interview President Jacob Zuma on the global stage. Uh, he was joined by President Paul Kagame of Rwanda. And I put it then to President Zuma that it must be very difficult pill to swallow that South Africa is the drag on the overall Africa growth story. Will we, at some stage, regain our former glory and become the bright spot on the African continent? I don't think that South Africa is a drag on the African uh, growth story. Um, because if you look at growth in South Africa, it has averaged about between three and five percent consistently over 20 years. Um, and even now as we're growing at 1.5 percent, it's from a very high base compared to the um, five percent growth that is being experienced by other countries. Uh, some countries on the continent uh, that do not have uh, as sophisticated infrastructure as we have or as high GDP as we have grow at about five, ten percent and we grow at at one or two percent. Ryan, I put it back to you that we've got 25 percent unemployment in this country and we that do we indeed. are targeting by 2030 that five percent GDP growth rate. The over 20 percent unemployment in South Africa uh, is not new. It has been there for the last 20 years and in fact it is in fact structural. Uh, and but to change that yes. we have to have higher growth rates. Do you agree? Uh, we, we have to change the structure of the economy to have higher growth rates. Uh, and if we change the structure of the economy, we will be able to change. Um, How do we do that? To deal with the unemployment problem. I don't know, that is a very complicated problem. But the, 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 the you see, we are trapped in a situation where we are not able to grow above 5% or to reduce unemployment below 15%. And that is structural because it has been happening over 20 years. Question is, what are the structural impediments that are not allowing us to grow above 5% or to reduce unemployment to single digits? Uh, and and I, I don't know, as I sit here, I don't know. It is something that requires um, uh, very clever people to come together and, and, and look at the South African economy. And Haven't say, they done however, that already in the National however, Development Plan? having said that, I think transformation could be an answer to this. And this is what we've been saying for 20 years. The South African economy's um, ownership patterns have to change. The structure of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange ownership patterns, the representation of women and uh, African people uh, in the executive boards or in the boards of uh, companies in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange have to change. We but, have but to how bring, do we change? Because have now that, that's what President Zuma was saying. We is have that to bring the majority of the population into the mainstream. Agreed. Of the and that but is who's the structural change. Isn't that business working closely with government to achieve those it changes? Is, it, is, it is government, business and labor that must do that with their contradictions. Well, let, let's hope we can, get, we can get it right. Talking about business, labor and government, the National Development Plan, 
and coming back to the success that you've just experienced on the locomotive front, that is an example of the NDP in motion. Yes, indeed. Indeed it is. In fact, uh, we were inspired by the NDP to approach the uh, locomotive acquisitions and, in fact, the deployment of the 300 billion capital investment program. Uh, you remember that the NDP emphasizes infrastructure investment uh, as a priority uh, for the South African economy to grow forward. And to that extent, we think we're coming to the party. Are there other examples out there that we can hold high as we start executing the NDP? ESCOM as I said earlier, is in fact amongst parastatals the biggest infrastructure investor, bigger than Transnet. Uh, ESCOM's programs, ESCOM's um, fixed capital formation contribution or ESCOM's uh, infrastructure spend on a yearly basis exceeds that of Transnet. Uh, and Transnet is only second to ESCOM. Uh, I think uh, if we give this uh, process of investing in infrastructure uh, chance, uh, we will be able to see the benefits in the economy. You arrived at the home of Transnet in February 2011, having come from the PIC, a very successful career at the PIC. How has that transition been for you? Because now it's been a couple of years where you have bedded down your Transnet uh, career. It's been quite exciting. Um, the PIC was very different. We dealt with portfolio investments. We shifted money around. We bought and sold uh, equities and bonds and uh, we managed portfolios and we tried to balance portfolios and we worried about duration and all sorts of things. Transnet is different. Transnet is a real economy. You invest in real locomotives, you are responsible for real locomotives, for real train drivers. Um, and, and in fact, a uh, staff complement of 60,000 people, uh, where uh, you have fatalities sometimes at work, uh, but certainly members of staff, uh, for example, um, for one reason or another, uh, even having to die, you hear of people dying all the time, people are retiring all the time, because it's 60,000 people. So it's real, there's a human side uh, in Transnet. And, and in fact, I enjoyed that more than I, I enjoyed the PIC, because at the PIC it was just cold uh, investment, uh, portfolio investments. And now uh, you can but, see but results on the ground. And you, you can, can actually change the infrastructure game you can, in the you country. You can actually see things happening. You can see that when we spent 2.7 billion rand on the 95 uh, locomotives, uh, 1 billion is estimated to create about uh, uh, 250 economy-wide jobs. And, and you can go to bed and say, oh, we spent 2.7 billion successfully and we've created about 250 jobs economy-wide. Um, or that we plan to spend 300 billion and we will create uh, about uh, 220,000 economy-wide jobs over the next seven years. And that, that, is, that is exciting. That is something to, to wake up make you wake up and Is want that to a vision you've set yourself at Transnet, the numbers that you're quoting now? Indeed, indeed. That, those would be the, that will be the impact, uh, socio-economic impact of the MDS if we are successful. We started about three years ago and so far our spending is at about 100 billion. For the foreseeable future, you see yourself at the helm from a Transnet. You sound very happy. I am indeed, yes. I have, uh, I have no, no qualms about staying at Transnet. I have no problem. What is your ultimate vision personally? So take yourself out of the transnet fold. What do you still, you've achieved so much and, and you one of, I was at a, a business meeting prior to our interview and I indicated I was leaving the meeting to come and interview you and uh, the response was, Brian Mulefe is one of the good guys. Is that what they said? That's what they said. <laughs> do you believe I, it? I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how people see you out there. Yes, do you, do yes. you have... Uh, a personal vision beyond the success that you've achieved in business? Well, personally, I'm quite happy to be making a positive contribution to taking South Africa forward as a South African, to be there, to be counted amongst uh, the people that are working, to be part of the chain of people that are working shoulder to shoulder to take us forward as a nation, as a country, and as a continent. Is there anything that you stress about from a broader economy perspective. 
you've, you've put a very bright light on issues that people are getting worried about at the moment and saying, hang on a minute, we need to look at these things in a slightly different way and celebrate the positive. Are there things that get you down about the economy? Well, as I say, it's our inability to deal with the structural issues, uh, transformation, um, the fact that we can't bring unemployment to single digits, the fact that uh, we, we, we need to get the economy to grow above 5%. And um, uh, over the last 20 years, we've managed between 3 and 5%. And at the moment, we're sitting at 1.5%. And so I'm, I ask myself all the time, what can we do better what can what is it that we can do uh, especially to uh, reduce uh, unemployment and poverty uh, in South Africa well, if we keep asking ourselves that question hopefully we can all come up with a joint solution Brian it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much chatting to Brian Malefi the CEO of Transnate you're watching captains here on CNBC Africa mm -hmm.